Hello and welcome to another QuickBooks training moment with Steiner Business Solutions. My name is Doug. Today we are going to learn how to post transactions in the desktop version of QuickBooks that have downloaded from your bank, from the bank feed section. I did a similar video um, for QuickBooks Online. The process is similar, but it's not exactly the same, so I'm doing separate videos. This one is geared towards the desktop version of QuickBooks. So one of the great things about uh, linking to your bank account is it will download the transactions directly into QuickBooks um, and kind of gives you a head start. Now keep in mind it does not post the transactions for you. It only downloads them into QuickBooks. It gives you a head start like I said. You know it will pre-fill the date and the amount of the transaction so that at least makes it go a little quicker and it prevents you from having typing errors. Uh, but you still need to post the transactions and tell QuickBooks where to put them. So in a previous video, I also showed you how to connect to the bank account. So if you need to know how to do that, then actually go watch that video. This one, we're going to we're gonna assume you've already made that connection, and uh, we're just going to download and post the transactions. So to do that, we go up to the banking menu, and we go into Bank Feeds and the Bank Feed Center. This is the Bank Feed Center. This is going to show you off to the left here all of the different accounts that you've connected to with your online banking. They can be different accounts, so you can have some through one bank, some through another bank, some through your credit card account, uh, loan accounts, all of those things can be connected here and on so the transactions get downloaded. Um, you click on each one of the different accounts, it will show you how many transactions you have that have downloaded that have not posted, it will show you uh, the last time a download was done, so this is a sample company but this was done over a year ago. Um, in the desktop version, it doesn't automatically update itself. In the online version, it does. It will automatically every day download the most recent transactions. In the desktop version, you have to update it. To do that, you go up here and click this refresh button, and it will update your accounts and download the most recent transactions. It knows the last time it did a download, so it knows to start from that point and download things uh, more recent than that. So this particular account, this is the one we're going to focus on today. Anytime Financial 1235, you see there's 10 transactions that have been downloaded that have not been posted. So we're going to go ahead and hit the transaction list button, and that's going to show us these transactions. All right, now you'll notice the first thing you may notice is, uh, is the different color coding. These have different meanings, the different colors. The blue ones mean that QuickBooks has already found transactions that are already posted in QuickBooks that it looks like might be matches to these transactions that were downloaded from the bank. And keep in mind, again, this screen, everything you see on the screen, or I should say nothing that you see on the screen, has actually been posted in QuickBooks yet. It is downloaded from the bank, and it's waiting for you to tell it what to do. Now, again, so then the blue transactions, it's saying, hey, we found something very similar to this transaction that's already posted in QuickBooks. Is it the same thing? Because if it is, we don't want to post it again. We want to go ahead and match it. So for example, um, this funds transfer on November 5th for $5,000. QuickBooks is saying it's already found a transaction that looks like that. Uh, do you want to match it? So we can look at the details to find out a little bit more if we want. Hit the view details. This is what uh, the bank is showing. Uh, transfer on 11-5, $5,000. This is what's in QuickBooks. On 11-25, 2019 there's a transaction for five thousand dollars so just by the date alone we can see this is not right now, this is a sample company so maybe acting a little quirky but this is a good example actually of of it trying to match to something that is not a match so this is 11 5 2003 and the transaction in QuickBooks is 11 5 2019 this is unusual, actually. I think this must be a sample company issue because typically it would not try to match something with dates that far apart. First of all, the, the amount has to be exact, so that is the case here. Um, but typically it won't, it won't try to match things that are more than a month or two apart in date between the, the bank date and the QuickBooks date. It won't go this far apart. But in this case, we would say, no, this is not a match. So we don't want to confirm this match. We hit not a match, and now it changes it to the yellow color, yellowish color, uh, and says it's not a match anymore. Okay? So, if anything, if any of these transactions though we decide are a match, 
let's say this Bay Shore all we've looked into it. So I, I do don't assume that because it's matched, the QuickBooks has matched it, that it's correct. Okay, we definitely want to look into it a little bit more and make sure that yes, it's matched to the right thing. Um, let's look at this Bay Shore oil. Okay. Again, this is probably just a QuickBooks uh, uh, sample company issue here because it actually has matched the right check number. It's just the date is off. So I think this is a sample company issue. But in this case, you can see the check number is the same. The name is the same. The amount is the same. So we can be pretty confident that, yes, this is a match. I think the date issue is just a sample company issue. So we'll hit confirm this match. It makes it go away, and basically it does not post it a second time. We don't want to post it a second time because then it would be a duplicate in the system. So those are the blue ones. Um, if you want to, if we have looked into all of these blue matched, auto matched ones, and we feel like we're comfortable that these are all correct and that they are actual matches, we can we can click the check boxes next to them and go down to batch actions and hit add approve. And we will accept all of those at one time instead of having to do them one at a time. Conversely, if we, if we, if these transactions we felt were duplicates and we wanted them to go away for some reason, you hit ignore, that basically deletes them off the screen and they will never be downloaded again. So be careful. If you hit ignore, it's basically like deleting it off of the download screen, the bank feed screen, and it will not come back. So, but here we're going to add, we're going to prove these because we, we're assuming that yes, these are matches. All right. The, the dark orange ones, see I can click on the dark orange bar now and it will only show me the dark orange transactions if I want. This is not a match, but it's saying, hey, we've seen transactions like this before. The last time you downloaded something that's, that the bank memo said ATM withdrawal, you ended up posting it to the vendor. In this case, the vendor is it's called ATM withdrawal, and you posted it to this particular expense account. So we're trying to pre-fill that for you and speed things up for you. Um, again, just basically QuickBooks is learning from what you've done in the past and is trying to pre-fill it for you. Doesn't mean it's right. You still must review it and make sure it's correct. Um, but at, over time, if you're having similar transactions every month, you know, similar vendors, uh, and it's going to the same expense accounts every month, this will definitely speed things up for you because you'll gain confidence that QuickBooks is putting it in the right place. Uh, and then you can just go through these a lot quicker. So if this is correct and we looked it over and say, yep, that's the right place, all you have to do is hit, go over to select and hit quick add. And boom. Just saying it's more than 90 days old. That's posted. All right, so there's two more transactions in this kind of this yellowish color. That means QuickBooks is saying we have no idea what these are. Okay, we don't, we've never seen these. We've, you've never posted anything similar to this. So... We don't know. You need to tell us where this needs to go. So we'll look at this bank charge. Um, it's going to ask if the, who the payee is. So in this case, you know, I don't know if, uh, who the bank, we'll say it's bank of any city is the payee and the account is going to be bank. Let's see, there's probably a bank, probably a bank, bank service charge. Account. That's where we're going to post it to. Okay, and then you quickly hit add, and it'll post it to that account if that's the case. Let's say we need to uh, break that out into multiple amounts. It's only nine dollars, but um, we're going to hit add more details, and now we can break this out into multiple accounts. So we'll say six of that should be bank service charges. And three of it is interest expense. So now we've broken it out into we're using the split like you would on your check screen, right check screen or a bill screen, and breaking it out into multiple accounts. You can put memos here. You can put customer jobs here. If you're tracking some of these expenses by a customer job, you can put the class here. So if you're doing class tracking, you can do that as well. And you can select from your class list and break these out that way. And then we hit add to QuickBooks and it will post. It. We have one less. This is the fund transfer. Um, there's another thing you can do here. You, we did the add more details. You can hit match to existing transaction. If you feel there really is, this is a match. It should be a match. You can hit that and it'll open up and give you a list of transactions that that 
could potentially be matches and you can select one if, if it is a match. If you're that confident that it's a match, then you can also just hit uh, ignore. And that will make this transaction go from the download screen. It will not delete the transaction that's already been posted if you did already post it from, you know, manually. Um, it'll, but it'll make this one go away. All right. So that is how. So we'll just post this one. We'll say that this was a transfer. We don't necessarily need to put a payee. We'll say it was a transfer from one account to this checking account. And we'll select quick add. Oops, hold on. select a different checking account. We'll say it's going to the savings account. It wouldn't let me post it to the same account. That was the same account. You can't go in and out of the same account. So that's the savings account. Now we've posted all the transactions. It says 10 of them are approved. If we click on the, the, the green bar that showed what was approved, it takes us right into the, the ledger. Now we can look at the transactions that are posted in the ledger. We go back to the bank feed screen. You'll see for this account, there are no more transactions out there. We can always hit renew every time we want to go do this. Um, this is a great way to keep up with your bank transactions. Like I said, it avoids, uh, it helps you save some time. It helps avoid some uh, typing errors, clerical errors. Um, it gets things in there a lot quicker. And like I said, QuickBooks learns as it goes along. So if you have repetitive transactions to the same vendors every month, it will learn where you're posting them and help you uh, post them a little quicker. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, you see a link, you should see a link on your screen there. You can click that to subscribe to our page and you'll be the first to be notified every time I post videos every month so you can be the first to see them. Um, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all the social media sites. Um, we're always trying to put good content and educational stuff out there for you. Check out our website, SteinerBusinessSolutions.com. Um, see all the services we offer, including more in-depth QuickBooks training. We do one-on-one -on -one training. Uh, if you're nearby, we can come to you and actually do one-on-one -on -one training there. We can also do it remotely if need be. So um, appreciate your time. Hope this was helpful. Have a great day.